Last week we arrived on the Isle of Anglesey. Nestled just off the north coast of Wales, this tiny island with its undeniably stunning coastline has an awful lot to offer. Its long sandy beaches, quaint old fishing villages, thriving forests and rich history is enough to attract any traveller. However, if you choose to do your travelling by van and like to van life in a certain way, then you may find a reason or two that this island is not for you. Us? Well, we've certainly found it tricky, but there is one very big reason why we'll definitely be back. We're picking you up this week from one of the very few decent park ups we've managed to find to spend the night. Good morning, folks. Two women living in a van. We're often asked how that goes. We're having one of them days, aren't we? We are having one of them days indeed. This is going to be a fun day. <laughs> I'm tired and I've got a few bags okay so I'm just trying to, to freeze your face <laughs> to get the puffiness down it's not the snacks at all <laughs> <laughs> you're like a hamster I reckon you've got it all stored in there shut up you I can deal without you today oh Emily What's this? <laughs> I'm trying, trying to get rid of my double chin. <laughs> You're trying to roll out, roll out the wrinkles and squash your double chin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have never seen anything <laughs> like this in my entire life. Do you want me to help you? Oh, there's a big side. There's yeah, a big end. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's right. Me. I'm just going to roll your face like this. It's like um, painting. It's, not... it's just like painting. You're, such... You're meant to do it in certain ways, Louise. You're meant to go away from the, the face. I can't say that this works or not because I use it just when I'm feeling a little bit crappy. It's not part of my routine. <laughs> In fact, I barely have one. Hence the wrinkles. But we bought, we spent money on this. Yeah, just when, for when I'm feeling like I need it, Louise. Got a problem with that? Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Emily's just taken summer out because this park up is absolutely perfect for her. I'm going to be honest with you though, if you're planning on coming to Anglesey, don't bank on being able to wild camp because it is almost impossible. I would say over the last year or two, every single perfect spot that was on this island has either been shut down or is very close to being shut down. We are really struggling to find park ups where we can walk the dog, get out with the cat or do anything. It is all no overnight parking. No, it's not no camping either. It is all just clearly no overnight parking. Even the spots that you used to be able to pay their locals for have been stopped. So obviously uh, that kind of van life is not welcome on here. However, there are plenty of campsites. Uh, look around, some are very expensive. We've managed to find a couple for sort of 15, 18 quid a night. But again, they are few and far between. You do need to look for them. But it doesn't take away from the fact it is a stunning island. And the wildlife, the wildlife is insane. So I found this little forest where red squirrels are in abundance. If you've been around a while, you'll know I love wildlife and I particularly love red squirrels. And this little forest, there was just, well, I don't know, I must have seen 30 red squirrels. So there's a, it's a community led project. There's feeders there. So they're very well fed, very well looked after. Very, very active. <laughs> they was running around chasing each other around the tree. So yeah, really, really cool for red squirrels. I think uh, the Isle of Anglesey has about 60% of Wales's or North Wales's population of red squirrels. So if you do want to see one of the little tufty-eared red furry little things, then Anglesey is a good place to start. I also was very, very, very lucky and I saw a wild tawny owl chick and I cannot explain to you my excitement because I just stumbled across it without even trying. So if you're trying to photograph uh, tawny owls in particular, it's very difficult. So I was very lucky to get this early morning experience, just me and this tawny owl all by myself. I got a little bit of video and a photo and then left it well alone and then yeah, stumbled across the red squirrel. So Anglesey, top, top points for its wildlife. Now that Emily is fueled up on coffee and, oh, and probably in a better mood, uh, we are ready to hit the road. So we're gonna go for a little bit of an explore, aren't we? We are indeed. I'm really looking forward to today. It should be good. We were riding high. Do you remember no one will deny? We were invincible heading for the sky before we started falling. We've just been driving around the coast, which is really, really pretty and love seeing the views. We've just coming into a little town called St Maze. Apparently it's very pretty as well, and it also has a bell. So we're gonna go and check that out. 
and it's the most northern oh. village in Anglesey. Apparently. Yes, apparently so. Down this tight little road, I hope there's nothing coming. The darker the sky, the brighter the stars, shining upon wherever we are. No matter near, no matter far, the darker the Ooh, sky, the brighter the stars. We've managed to find a lovely bit of parking that just is straight onto the bay where you can oversee, sit down, have a coffee, chill out. All right, it's just really, really pretty around here. When we've been driving around the coast, they're just kind of like cute little bays and stuff. And it really gives you Cornwall vibes because you've got the rocks and the cliff faces and stuff like that in view. It's just so pretty. What a way to spend the morning, right? Just sit here, chilling out. I just need another coffee now. The darker the sky, the brighter the stars I know there are stories Greater stories to be told Every single one of these little villages that we come to on Anglesey all the buildings are a really pretty colour, don't they? Yeah, I don't understand why they do it, but I like that they do. Yeah, they're all painted up and they're all really neat and clean. It's, uh, mm -hmm. It is really nice to look at. This is St. Patrick's Bell and it's named after him because he came to the island and founded a church. The bell was gifted to the village as a reminder of the ever-growing climate change. And how it works is that the sea comes in at high tide and rings the bell. There's like a pendulum and a long stick inside that hits it and makes a noise. But it's pretty cool and there are 13 of these dotted around England, Wales and Scotland. This is the pendulum and you're not to hit it like by yourself or anything, it's only for the sea because you have to be respectful to the bell and to the villagers around as well. And I would imagine it gets very frustrating if you live here and every tourist comes and dings that bell every five minutes. So yeah, we're not going to ding the bell. No. We're going to wait quite a while by the looks of things for the tide to come in. Eventually. It's a little bit anticlimactic if I'm honest, but I think that's because the sea is very calm today, so it's not very loud. And I would say that high tide is meant to be at 1.25 and it's what about 10 to 12 now. So I'd say get here for about two hours before before high tide is said on the internet so you can actually see it ringing. I bet it's um if it's choppy, which is most of the time on the island, I bet that's bloody annoying if you live here. <laughs> you, I reckon it's like when trains go past, you get used to it, don't you? Right, where are we going now? Uh, we're off in the car. In the car? In the van, in the van, we're off in the van. We've jumped from the north of the island to the south of the island very, very quickly because we're rushing to get on a boat trip, aren't we? We are, and I really hope that we get to see some really good things. Yes, we're going to look for puffins. Look at my big lens. Look at that bad boy. I know exactly what to do with this. Yeah, stop flapping it around though. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll carry that. If you want to see more of Beau Morris, this pretty little town, it is very pretty, then we featured it properly in last week's vlog, so I'll put a link up here or in the description or something. But now we're getting on a boat. I'm a bit concerned because last time I went on a boat was when we went from Denmark to Norway and I was very, very ill. So hopefully this is a bit of a better experience. very noisy so we'll do our best. Uh, we've just established when we're driving in the van and I say to Emily oh, to the left or to the right she hasn't got a clue what I'm talking about but ex-navy we've just learned port well I've just learned port and starboard so now we're going to try that. We're gonna try, I think that that'll work so much better. So the next roundabout you need to take the first port. <laughs> the first port? The third starboard. <laughs> yeah? I can't wait for this this is gonna be great because I guarantee you you're the one that's gonna mess it up not me. Yeah probably and I'm not feeling sick yet so fingers crossed I'm all good. Although you are in the right place if you do need to be sick. Yeah I've, I've gone right by the edge.
Okay, so not only was this boat ride pretty choppy, it was also extremely busy. Neither of which make for great wildlife filming conditions. Getting thrown around with a 600mm lens trying to shoot around very excitable people is difficult. However, for wildlife spotting, this trip was great. We saw plenty of seabirds along with my old favourites, the seals. The main reason we were all out there though was for the island's namesake, the puffins. And although I failed miserably in my attempt to film them, I did manage a few shots. Oh, the puffins are so cute and they're really, really little as well. And it's quite windy when you get out there and I've got a red nose. <laughs> Flapping, is it? Well worth the 18 quid it cost, isn't it? Oh, definitely. They're just, I can't believe how small they are, actually. And I was supposed to be going to Scoma by myself, but this one now wants to come, I do, I? yeah, I'll be really jealous if you go around me. As we headed back to the shore, Emily had made a new friend whilst contemplating her dinner options. With us being at the seaside, there really was only one choice, but was Emily's world about to crumble? Was the chippy closed? Closed. It's closed. Closed till when? I don't know. It's closed, isn't it? With our time on Anglesey over, we headed back to mainland Wales. If you have never driven through Snowdonia National Park before, then put it on your list. There are some exceptional driving roads that the camera really doesn't do justice. We were looking for somewhere to park up for the night before further exploration in the morning. After struggling on Anglesey for the last week, well, anywhere with a view would do. morning right are you glad to be back on the mainland oh i did love anglesey it was so pretty and lovely views and i would have liked to have spent more time there but the park ups were tricky so yes i am glad to be back here emily's right park ups on anglesey were tricky there are no overnight parking signs absolutely everywhere isn't there yeah it was crazy the mount like when we was looking around and on park for night and things like that and yeah just so many new signs up everywhere yeah even if you're trying to google maps and get off park mm -hmm. for night we found a few but even though they've got no overnight camping signs in so yeah. it's it's obviously been hammered because if you go back to videos from a couple of years ago lots of people had a great time and we went to south stack lighthouse that's all no overnight camping so yeah maybe an updated video for you here of what it's like on anglesey at the minute but in spite of that, it is well worth going. We did manage to find a few spots. We've not put them in the video because we just don't want them to get hammered, mm -hmm. uh, but they're few and far between. But the wildlife, I've never found it so easy. Uh, red squirrels, owls, puffins, all within like a couple of days of each other and all without really having to try, which for wildlife photography is um, awesome. So if you're into your wildlife, it's definitely a good place to go. Oh uh, yeah, and like with the red squirrels and stuff, you don't even have to like sit there and wait for hours like this one would normally do. They're just there. It really was like being in a magical squirrel forest. They're just yeah. running around everywhere. So we will definitely be going back to Anglesey uh, for the wildlife and for the epic uh, coastal scenery. Whether we go in the van or not, I don't know, because it's just, or we'd book a campsite and maybe base oh, yeah. ourselves somewhere mm -hmm. and then go off, which to be honest, for a small island like that, uh, the tourist, uh, using the tourist facilities is going to be more beneficial. However, with that being said, some of the campsites were ridiculously overpriced for this time of year. Ah, uh, it was horrendous. When I was looking on um, Google and trying to, I was literally just zooming in and picking one by one by one, and some of them were like 40 odd pounds a night, and I was like, I just can't pay that. And that was with no electric. No electric, and it's like checking at two, but you need to leave by 10. You're not even getting 24 hours. No. So, uh, yeah, you need to look around. We did find a couple, didn't we, yes, that were we cheaper. Did, yeah. So, but there was one car park really annoyed me. It was no overnight parking, it was six pounds all day parking for cars. £10 all day parking if you went in a van and that include like this van or a Volkswagen transporter you're taking up one space the yep. same so why are you paying £10 you're not getting any extra facilities or overnight parking so yeah just be cautious of that anyway we've plowed on enough we found this cracking spot uh, in Snowdonia and 
it is beautiful. There's a lovely walk along the lake. There, there? is, yes. It's really, really pretty. But we can't stay here either because there's no phone signal and Emily's back to work. So we're going to get on the road and head somewhere new. Oh, it's just every little bit. <laughs> Wales is a challenge, but Wales is 100% worth it. Definitely. Let's go. Oh, wait a minute. I've got to be my breakfast first. Go over there, don't chomp in my ear. We've driven about 40 minutes across Snowdonia, another beautiful drive. It really is amazing, isn't it? Absolutely stunning area, a must see. And we found the internet. It's quite late in the day now though, Emily has finally finished work. Oh, it's good, thank God. Bane of my life is Emily's job. I haven't <laughs> got a job, but your job gets in my way. Uh, we've got, we're leaving Wales tomorrow morning, so we've got time to do one more very short little hike, haven't we? Yes, it's a very nice one as well. Hopefully, we haven't seen it yet. Well, I can see the view now, it's the view, great. The view now is pretty awesome. <laughs> It's a short one, but it's a steep one. But Emily must be either tired or hungry, because for once, I'm in front. You're going in slow, coach. I let you get in front. No, I reckon AJ's just not got the oomph to tow you up the hills today. Hey, baby, if you're looking for some crazy, I tell you everybody's standing in a line for the water slide. This is Cliff Morph in Waterfall. It is very, very pretty, and we're going to go and have a closer look. And that was Emily's best attempt at Welsh pronunciation. Let us know how she did in the comments. We know it's going to be bad. It's not going to be how it's meant to be pronounced, is it? Let's face it. But it's how it's written. Take me on a spree. I want to get to know me. Every little Apparently there's some old mining ruins at the top. It's a long way up. Uh, we're heading up to see if we can find them. And I think this thing that I'm walking in is some sort of old chute maybe for sending stuff down. I'm not sure, but it's a darn sight easier walking on this than all the slippy loose slate that's over there. So it's a big one. When they built Wales, I reckon they thought, I tell you what, we want it really, really beautiful here, but that's gonna attract all the people. So what we'll do is we'll put all the good stuff at the top of massive hills. And that, folks, is why Wales is so hilly. I said it doesn't matter now, but it defeats me. Shackles around one's feet, it's not so neat. Obviously, Emily's made it all the way to the top about four days ago and is absolutely fine. Do you know when I tell you you're heartless and stuff? Yes. Do you reckon when they made you, they removed the heart and just put in double-sized lungs? Probably, I reckon so, yeah. <laughs> I think it's worth it. Where did all the swallows fly when I was 17? Caught up in a dream. This is a slate quarry that opened in 1810 and in 1816 it was connected to the Festinog Railway and in 1900 it was acquired by the Oakley Quarry and the two were connected underground and in 1970 they both closed, which isn't actually that long ago. The Festinog, Festinog? Festinog, the I've fe googled it, I've googled it. <laughs> the Festinog Railway still runs as a tourist train. It does. And just as we pulled up earlier, I got a very bad shot of it going past the back window, but it's a really cool little steam train, isn't it? It is, and I, we all know I love a steam train. Yes, and you can get it from here to Porth Maddock. Maddock? Porth Maddock. Porth Maddock is how I say it, <laughs> but I think it's Porth Maddock. <laughs> um, on that note, there's a few more of these uh, little buildings dotted around, uh, but we're not going to do that because Emily's hungry, so we're going back to the van for dinner. Standard. Oh, don't kiss me. She's going to eat me, I reckon. <laughs> the onion's looking at me. It's got eyes. It's got eyes. <laughs> it's looking at me. <laughs> don't eat me, Louise. Don't eat me. Plants do have feelings. But we've got to eat something, Louise. Oh! 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 Ah! 
We're having a quick and dirty van meal today because we are, well, we're knackered, if I'm honest with you. I'm shattered. I just want to lay on my bed. Wales has absolutely battered us with its heels, but we have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we're having hot dogs. Emily didn't want to film dinner, but the hot dog dance is probably my favourite of all the dances. Have you got the energy? I have. Always the energy for hot dog dance. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggly dog. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggly dog. Is that, is that all I'm getting? That, that's as much as you're getting, all right? I felt I'd done really well. You wasted some of it getting a new camera angle. We've got vegetarian sausage for Emily. Emily's having one hot dog and crisps. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm not having all of those normal hot dogs for myself. They're for me, AJ. And I think even Joni's bottled out because she's eating a whole packet of pink wafers. <laughs> we're eating good on this trip. It's because we it's because we need the energy. We feel like we need the energy. So we're just eating like random crap stuff. Mm. On that note then, we're going to eat dinner and probably go to bed, even though it's still pretty early. It's fine. If you've enjoyed our little trip round Wales and Anglesey, please let us know by giving us a comment or a thumbs up or... Dinging the bell or hitting that subscribe button. The subscribe is the important one, I feel. It, uh, and the thumbs up. And the thumbs up. Anyway, if you haven't enjoyed it, then uh, you're an idiot because you're still watching this video and it's <laughs> sure to be at least 20, 25 minutes long by the minimum. Uh, we have to leave Wales now. We are heading to Camp Quirky. Very excited for that and we will see you lot on the next one when I have a lot of van jobs to do and we are making our way into an unexplored territory in France. Oh, I'm very, oh, very, very excited to get back over that water. And hopefully some warm weather, although Wales this time has been extremely mm -hmm. kind. We've had two days of drizzle and the rest of it's been sunny. That's so it. thank you Wales for your hospitality and your fine weather and we'll see you all on the next one. Bye.